Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney the Art Sherpa, and today I want to show you with just two colors how you can learn how to paint better animal hair today. I think this is something that you can absolutely do. I want you to get your paint, get your brushes, come and paint along with me because I can show you how fun and easy this skill can be. Come on, let's go. Be sure and paint this along with me so you can be able to do these techniques for yourself at home. I've got my canvas that I'm painting on here and over here I have my paint. I have acrylic paint in black and I have acrylic paint in white and I have three brushes that you might be able to find where you're at. The exact materials are in the description below. I'm going to take my number eight bright here. This is a synthetic and bristle mix and I'm going to load for my first color which is going to be the black. So I'm going to start my fur with its darkest value right now. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to make just a basic shape so I can show you this fur. So I'm just painting it with black paint. This is just the black. Whether you were painting brown fur or any color fur, you're going to want to start with your base colors, your value feeds. Right, so this is my deep value field. Now I'm gonna add a highlight right here because I'm gonna see that my light source is coming from there, all right? So to do that, I'm gonna create a slightly lighter value. I'm gonna do that with the white and black, but again, this is the how you paint the fur. So I want a color that is, a, I want a shade, a tone that is lighter than the black, but not much. See how that's just a gray up? That's what you want. I'm gonna come right here, and I'm gonna say this part of the fur, right, and I'm just stroking back. See, even my strokes are light and pulled. I'm pulling that back already. It has kind of a fur feeling. You wanna pay attention to the direction of the fur when you're painting it and the light source that's shining on it. Now let's dry this so that we can do step two. All right, let's get going. So over here we have our white and our black again, and I'm going to take this number four bright. I'm not really gonna put any water on it yet because I want it to be what's called a dry brush. That means that I'm not using water to help improve the flow of my paint. And I'm mixing a shade lighter, so this would be three shades up from my original shade. And I'm gonna start laying in the basis of the fur shape that I have. So when we're painting fur, here I'm on the edge of my brush, stroking down, making the clumps of fur, right, that we might see on this animal, allowing the dark values to show through underneath. When you're stroking and looking at your picture, your reference, your pet, pay attention to the direction of the hairs and the shapes, the bigger shapes, that they're making because that's actually what you're painting. So I'm painting these shapes, just pulling the stroke down. It's on the edge of my bristles here. Let me go slow so you can see I'm just pulling that down, right? It feathers and tapers at the end. As I do this, the length of the hairs are different. Up here, these will be a little bit shorter than what happens as I come down. And I'm leaving a lot of the dark value to still show. I'm painting the clumps or forms of the hair the way it might be blowing in the wind or growing naturally with cowlicks. These things all impact your hair. But I bet you're already relieved to know that when you're painting hair, fur, any of this, you're not painting every individual million hair. Painting the shapes. So let's find these shapes. Now I'm pulling the shape down. I'm saying the hair is blowing a little bit this way. It's creating that sense. If you're running low on paint, you can add some more pigment. Don't add water because you want a dry brush because you want the dark color underneath to show through. So just adding these shapes as we go through. You can see my stroke is soft. Let's a lot of the paint underneath show through. And tell me that you can't practice this again and again and again with just black and white paint in your brush. You can learn this. You can do this. It's just about knowing the steps. And I'm gonna show you the steps. All of them to start getting better at painting fur. 
Now down here, I'm gonna go longer on my stroke. And I'm gonna say that these hairs are maybe a little bit more like guard hairs and go longer on this animal. All right, see already, looking more like hair. Next step, I'm going to, in this case, wipe my brush off, but not rinse it. I'm gonna come over and pull a little more white out onto the brush. Come over here and mix a shade that's lighter, one shade lighter, than the shades around it. See how it's just a lighter value? That's why sometimes doing this in black and white is helpful because then you can see the shapes that things are making. You're almost done, believe it or not. I'm coming to the edges, see this, of my fur, just tapping and stroking the brush very carefully. I'm not using a specialty brush. I'm just paying attention to value. See, I'm just making these little strokes. The strokes respect the directionality of the fur. They build up together, come tapering on the edge here. And see, this is just about being light and pulling this little feathered shape coming here. You know, you make it lighter up here overall because that's where the light source is. It's paying attention. Coming here, feathering, 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 building it up. Soft pressure. Soft, soft pressure here. Right? See how the fur begins to come out of this black field of paint? And you can start to feel all of the life underneath it. I haven't even gotten new paint yet. So probably at this point, we should rinse out the brush that we're doing dry brushing with and dry it off again in a towel because the acrylic paint may be curing on the bristles. I'm gonna rinse this off and I'm gonna dry it out really well because I don't want it to have a lot of moisture. It would ruin my dry brushing. So I'm gonna feel it, feels good. I'm gonna come over here to my white paint, get just a smidge of my black in there. I want a lighter color and I've even used, but not all the way white. I'm saving that to this last detail part that makes it all pop together. So you can see I'm loaded, I'm ready. I'm gonna come here and create this next level of highlight in the fur. Get a little more, it's not coming off. There you go. You can be light. You don't have to be heavy handed. It's more about the overall story and telling it with conviction. So what I mean by that is that if my fur is stroking this way, I commit to that, right? I'm gonna get a little more paint on because I see that it's going lighter than I want it to even on the dry brush. See, come back and put that definition into the fur. And that's really about just that conviction of my stroke, committing to what I have designed here, and going with the going with that fur directionality. Let's come here. The end. Get a little more paint. And I'm just basing that on if I'm not getting the stroke I want, not getting the effect I want, then I'll go reload. And then believe it or not, after this, to really pop this fur, there's really just one more step. I'm gonna definitely rinse this out and put this to the side. And I'm gonna get a detail brush. You just need a detail brush that gives you a nice hair point. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna actually dip this in water, and I'm gonna thin my acrylic paint out a little bit. I roll my brush. And I load everything just on the tip. This is just the white. And I'm going to make, now just a few, I don't have to make that many, white highlight marks. So this is why we didn't want to use white white as our lightest gray, because then we wouldn't see our subtle but very important 
fine line hair highlights. I find it also helps to rinse these out, reload them. Again, so you're always getting beautiful lines for the fur. So now you can see, oh, you didn't have to paint every bit of it. You just paint the shape and then you come in and you create dimension. You can just see how I'm just letting the fine lines of the brush make this happen. Acrylic is really wonderful in that you can paint fur this way with acrylic paint because you can paint lighter colors over darker colors easily and because it dries quickly. So actually fur is one of those places that I think acrylic paint has an advantage over a lot of mediums, except maybe digital. Digital can really rock out some fur. All right. So I'm gonna see how I'm just, my pressure's very light. That's how I get these small strokes. It's about getting these small strokes that show the texture and define the shading and the directionality that you've laid down and committed to. And you can see now that I'm not really even struggling to get that. If you need to thin it, you just a little water, swirl around. I like to roll it off and load everything on the tip there like a little ball. So super fun, super easy. You practice this, your black and white paint. You'll get it, comes quick. Give it a couple tries. know or make videos with the colors and the different types of hair but just understanding this process is so important to succeeding at this art skill putting the hairs wherever I want them to be all right I feel we've done that three brushes two colors of paint and I have hair. This is the fundamentals of how you create these textures and these effects in art. And I think they're super fun. And I think that if you practice them, you absolutely can do them. Now listen, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Be sure and check out the playlist below for the other hair videos. And I wanna see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.